Um, hi. I'm just waiting to see if more people want to come in. Um, so far there's not really anyone here. Um, um, I wonder if more people are going to come. Oh, welcome, welcome. Um, um, there's not really anyone coming in. I was going to start, but not really anyone. <laughs> um, hello. Um, it's me, Minty Tails Dubs, or Ace Pilot Prower, if you know me from Instagram. Um, welcome to my meet and greet. Um, introduce myself. I'm 16, and I'm currently residing in Arizona as a voice actor. Um, I started my voice acting and cosplay back in 2018. And you may know me as the voice actress for a multitude of different fan projects especially Sonic fan projects, as I have a pretty wide vocal range and can voice quite a few different characters from the Sonic franchise. Um, I'm most well known for my Tails voice in the Miles Tails 101 YouTube plush series, um, the official Tails for Random Goon VO, cameos as Amy Rose in a few of Super Sonic Blake's Sonic plush videos, um, the speaking and singing voice for Tails in Cam Cam series, Sonic Harmonic, and a variety of characters in the Sonic Stop Motion series created by Kid Awesome Studios. Um, I practice my voice acting pretty often, and I use my home studio that I put together myself. Um, if there's anyone that has any questions they wanted to ask or anything like that, um, I'm free to answer any questions. Um, Anyone wanted to ask anything about my voice acting or anything like that? I'm free to answer that. Um, let's see. How do I call someone up? Um, here we go. Hello there. <laughs> Hello. Um, did you have How's any questions? Going? Pretty good. Uh, yes. Um, I'll actually throw. I'll actually throw something in here. Um, in here. Throw in here real quick for you. Um. Uh, to kind of help get the ball to kind of help get the ball rolling um what um what made you first interested in um pursuing voiceover and do you have any um is there anybody that you look look up to as a is there anybody is there anybody you would say that you was your biggest inspiration or and uh if if, if so feel free to you know elaborate as fill as much as you <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I can't words myself. You get, you get the idea. Uh, the, so yeah, basically the, so essentially, um, I, te I technically, w I technically would not normally say more than one question, but feel bad for you. So I just wanted, I wanted to just go ahead and I wanted to help you out here. Uh, but yes, uh, I guess what's your, um, um, I don't mean that in a bad way, by the way, you're doing great, <laughs> but, uh, uh, what, what do you, but like, what made you interested in pursuing uh voiceover and who are, would you say are your biggest inspirations? Um, what inspired me to start voice acting, I would say, uh, I watched a lot of cartoons. Um, I really like acting in general. I've always been in school plays, things like that. Acting has always been very interesting to me. I love expressing myself being different characters, putting myself in other characters' shoes. Um, I really like sharing my emotions and feelings through acting. And I feel like I'm able to express that best through voice acting and my voice. Um, I really look up to voice actors such as Colleen O'Shaughnessy, Kate Higgins, Mike Pollock, Roger Craig Hi. Smith, because they're all really good at expressing their feelings like through their voices, you can tell that they're really genuine and their acting is realistic, which I really admire about them. Um, I talked to Colleen O'Shaughnessy and Kate Higgins in particular, and also Roger, and they all said that acting is the very first thing that's very important about voice acting. Facts. It's not yes. just reading a script, but you also have to share your emotion when you're speaking, because then it's more believable. And 100%. so that's what I've been practicing. And that's what I find is really fun and enjoyable about voice acting. Awesome. 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 And, uh, but yeah, uh, I feel, yeah, I feel like that answered my question really very rather, rather nicely. In that case, uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, 
I'll go ahead and hop over. I'll go ahead and hop over in the audience for you. And there you go. You got an extra. There you go. You got an extra hand raise. I was like, I was, I was, about to, I, was about to, I was about to say. I feel like there should be a bunch more people up in here, but that's okay. That's okay. We got. But we making progress, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyways, uh, ready. I will go ahead and hop into the audience. Thank you. You're welcome. And let's call up the next person. Hi there. Um, did you have any questions? I got it. Hold on. <laughs> There we go. Right, there it goes. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, I can I can hear you. All right, there you go. So who is like like which voice do you like to do a lot? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I would say that my favorite voice to do is Miles Tails Per Hour, because I just love being Miles Tails Per Hour. Being Tails just feels natural. And I can easily switch into his voice. And so, yeah, I'd say my favorite character to play is Tails. But, um, also, I would say I like doing, like, Amy Rose or, like, um, Dream the Rabbit or, um, yeah. Mm. So, I like doing different characters. And those are my top three favorites. Oh, cool. You are very talented. Thank you. And thank you for the question. You're welcome. All right. See ya. Did anyone else have any questions that they were curious about? Okay, I got a request. Oh, Sorry, all right. I didn't see the accept button. <laughs> That's all right. Um, what was your question? Um, any tips on restoration, like for your voice after like you get done a, like doing voices for a really long time, and there's a bunch of strain on your voice. Hmm. I'd say the best way that I recover my voice is by making sure I keep my throat really wet with water. Um, sometimes I like tea. Um, before I do my voice acting, I stretch my vocal cords. Um, I do vocal exercises. Um, I would say that because I'm, I'm pretty used to doing tales now, it used to be a big strain on my voice. Because before I used to like try a bit too hard to get into his voice, which would mm. put a lot of strain on, on my throat. But now since it comes pretty naturally, I don't really have to strain as hard, which is good. Yeah, cool. And obviously um, resting and, and not doing strenuous voices every single day, take breaks in between and like, in general, just be careful with your voice. Treat it with respect. Okay. I'm fairly thank new you. to... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just saying thank you for the question. Um, what was it you wanted to say? Oh, I was going to say um, I'm fairly new about thinking about a voice for my character. And I was just like wondering like how like voice restoration would be like how people do that because i know my voice is kind of my vocal cords may have been calloused for a long time <laughs> okay everyone starts somewhere so i'm sure you'll be able to find that voice to your character just like have fun with it and practice different tones of voice and different pitches and um just improv a lot and that's what's the most fun is coming up with a voice for a character that doesn't have a voice that's that's what I find fun, being able to imagine a character voice. Yeah, that's awesome. I really Thank you. appreciate your question. Thank you for asking. No problem. So how do I get back into the audience? Um, there we go. Um, did anyone else have any questions they wanted to ask? Okay, I got. I see I have some questions here. Um, what voice is difficult for you? Um, Shadow Wash 1. Um, I'd say the most difficult voice for me are deep-voiced characters because I have a naturally high voice. So, um, I would say, like, when I'm practicing maybe Rouge, um, it's kind of hard to, like, get into her voice. It's a little bit, a little deeper. And um, it's not as natural for me, so it's a lot harder um, than doing something higher, obviously. So, yeah. Um, 
deep voices. That is what is most difficult for me. Um, are there any other questions that, um, or like curiosities that you had, or like questions about, in general, like my voice acting setup or anything like that? Um, not. Um, oh, I had a question. Okay. Hi again. There we go. Hi. <laughs> um, did you have any a question? Yes, I was very curious about microphones. Um, Ooh, okay. Like, what what type of microphones are good, and what type of microphones aren't as good to be doing like vocal recordings? Um, I would say that the best microphones you could use, um, in my opinion, either a USB microphone for a PC. Or there's more expensive microphones that come with their own amplifying system. But for me, I use a streaming mic that connects with a USB port. And it is the professional streaming mic of the Torch. Um, it has different settings, such as there's like a whisper mode and there's a dynamic voice mode. You can change the gain, that's, which is very important. If you don't want it to be too loud, which is very important when you're voice acting because you don't want any clipping, which is when the voice goes too loud and your recording gets distorted, which can occur pretty often if you're using, for example, a more inexpensive microphone, like one that connects to your cell phone. Those mm -hmm. aren't as good, um, but obviously you can voice act on pretty much anything it's not limited to just good microphones and a good setup because to start off, obviously you need to start somewhere. So just practicing your voice, even if you're not recording it, it's very important and very valid. And it's just in general, very good practice for someone who wants to be a voice actor. Um, and also I would suggest recording somewhere that's more quiet or putting pillows around your microphone, maybe a drape over your recording area, um, getting a pop filter. So, for example, you've heard my voice. I've popped a few times by accident by getting a bit too close and forgetting my pop filter, which is a mistake on my end. But, I mean, since I'm not making any professional recordings to send in, it's not as bad. But I just want to make sure that I get my best recording quality, especially when recording for a professional gig. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm a little unfamiliar with some of the terms you've used. Um, which ones? Uh, would you like me to explain any? Please do. Um, what is a pop filter? Oh, a pop filter is you can buy it on Amazon or online. It's basically like a little foam filter that it can be foam, it can be mesh. It's like, it can be mostly like in a circular shape and it extends over to the front of the microphone and it prevents you, like for example, when I did the P sound right now, from making that microphone pop and it, it prevents that sound from getting into your recordings and messing it up. It, the P sound is a lot softer if you're speaking with a pop filter. Oh, okay. So that that punch of the the P sound doesn't really get through when you use a pop filter. Yes, that is correct. Oh, okay, that's very helpful. You're welcome. Um, I'm glad you asked. Yes, because like I I'm I'm I've been learning a lot about music production and how to like deal with sounds. My setup is not the greatest at all, but it's something. And I've been trying to learn for the past three years now. It's really good. I'm really glad that you're finding it, things that you're interested in and that you keep pursuing it. I'm sure that you're going to do really big things. Aw, thank you. You're awesome. And too. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> Alrighty. Does anyone else have anything they wanted to ask? Um, okay. I've got another question here. From Shadow Wash One or Shadow Ash One, it is what advice do you have for beginner voice actors? And I definitely have some advice. I would say that if you're beginning in voice acting, to 
just any time that you're available, do vocal exercises, um, practice different pitches, um, listen to your voice on a recording because the number one thing that um, happens with beginner voice actors is your voice sounds different in your head than it does on a recording. So I would say if you have a microphone that has a monitoring system where you're able to hear your voice back or get some training headphones such as earphones, which are online and you can put them on your head and listen to your voice back, how it sounds to others. Um, because when I was beginning and I was, I was doing, for example, my tails voice, it sounded a lot more pitchy and different when I recorded it compared to what I heard in my head. So yeah, that's my first number one tip. Make sure that you know what your voice sounds like to others. Also make sure that you take care of your voice and don't strain too much in the beginning. Um, I would also say to drink lots of water, lots of tea. Um, um, let's see what else. What, what else is key to beginner voice actors? Um, never give up, obviously. Um, if you're having a hard time or you have some creative block, um, I would suggest shifting out to different, different things, not just stick to one thing, one interest. Um, I, for example, when I was beginning, I would read comic books. I would do memes, anything that I found fun. I would do fan dubs where I would do impressions and imitate other characters. I would make up my own voices. Um, pretty much do anything that you find fun and enjoyable. It's not all about being perfect. It's about getting yourself out there, practicing your voice, getting familiar with voice acting and enjoying yourself. Make sure you're always enjoying yourself because if you're not having fun while voice acting, it's just not nearly as enjoyable. Um, that's what I've had problems with before, trying to think my voice isn't perfect enough. I'm not expressive enough. This isn't good enough. Don't, don't think like that. It's, it's, it's all important to just keep trying. And obviously it's not going to be perfect at the start, but that's the thing about practicing. Just keep practicing, practicing, resting, practicing, and eventually you'll be able to get there. And um, even if it's not like to the level of a professional voice actor right away, that's all right too. because. I look up to Colleen O'Shaughnessy, Kate Higgins, and like they said, just keep practicing, just keep trying, um, keep acting. Acting is very important. Um, really let out your emotions when you're, when you're voice acting. Anger, um, happiness, joy, all that, just express it through your voice. It's your voice. It's your control. You have command of your voice. You're the character. Just put yourself in the character's shoes. Don't be afraid to get silly and, and weird and get out there. Make silly voices and laugh. And yeah, that's, that's what's fun about being a voice actor, in my opinion, especially being a beginner voice actor. Um, and so, yeah, that, that would be my answer for beginning in voice acting. Um, and obviously, once you're intermediate in voice acting, advanced in voice acting, that's when you can start reaching out more, trying more difficult things, um, expanding your horizons more, and overall just continue to challenge yourself. Don't just stick to one thing. It's a lot more fun with variety. That's, that's, that's what I think in my personal opinion as a voice actor. And if you're having a hard time with deep voices or a hard time with high voices, then make that your focus for a while. Practice that until you're comfortable with it and then move on to something else. That's what I do. And I don't stick to just one thing because then I get exhausted. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I would say about being, finding your balance as a beginner, intermediate, and more advanced voice actor. Um, 
there's anyone else that had any more questions, I'm free to answer them. Um, when the stream started, I already introduced a lot of the projects that I was in, but for those that um, came in a little bit later, um, I'm, I'm pretty much among one of the Internet Tales voice actors, mostly for YouTube, um, but I'm also on, on TikTok and Instagram. And in general, I do a lot of memes, a lot of plush videos, a lot of stop motion. I have my own plush series that I'm working on called Tales from the Workshop. If anyone's interested in that, um, it's on my channel. Um, and um, it's obviously I'm not just into Sonic. I, I'm into other franchises as well. If that's all right to mention, um, I'm into Pokemon, Nintendo. I voiced Crystal from Star Fox for a couple different uh, projects. I voiced Ash Ketchum for a couple projects. Um, I'm also been in the My Hero Academia fandom. Done quite a few different projects for that. Um, trying to think of what else the audience might be interested in. Um, feel free to, um, I got another question here, just right now. What franchise would you like to do a voice for? That's a very good question. Um, for the franchise that I look up to the most and would want to do a voice for, I would say Sega. I definitely, if I can get into Sega someday, and do pretty much any role for Sega, I would be happy. And that that's my dream to be in a Sega project someday. Um, even Nintendo or Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon. Um, pretty much any any cartoon series that's for all ages, families. I, I love family friendly content. So pretty much any franchise that is doing fun, family-friendly content, I would be up to, to voice for. Um, maybe audiobooks in the future. Um, narrations. Uh, I'm honestly up for anything. Uh, I just want to share my voice and make other people happy with it. So yeah, even though Sega would be my first choice, there's still a lot of other franchises and studios that I would be excited to work for. I see we got another question here. Welcome back to the better. stage. Hi, I'm getting better at hitting the accept button. <laughs> anyway, I got a bit of a loaded question for you. All right. This will dive deep into, into the fundamentals of a person. But I remember earlier you said that expressing emotion with your voice acting is a good way of just trying to feel out the characters and stuff like that, right? Yes, exactly. What if someone doesn't understand emotion? Oh, um, well, I would say if someone's having a difficulty understanding emotion, which I have had in the past, um, because uh, Asperger's syndrome, it's a little bit harder for me to understand and and key into emotional prompts sometimes and Same here. so like for i can kind of have difficulty um seeing what somebody is feeling when they're talking to me or if i'm interacting with someone that can be a little difficult for me so for me um i feel like tone tags and descriptions of exactly what the what the character is feeling is very helpful, especially in scripts that I have to read. Um, watched a lot of videos on YouTube that talk about having an authentic um, expression. Um, mm. uh, one of the things that I've had a little bit of difficulty with is playing a sad character or playing a character that is in a lot of, that's feeling emotionally distraught. I feel like Humor is a lot easier for me to convey or joy, but a character that has more serious type emotions, that's something that I've been practicing and practicing and practicing, trying to sound more authentic and not as robotic. Um, 
I, mm. I, I really, whenever somebody gives me a script, I ask them, do you please elaborate um, on exactly how this line should be delivered? Because um, if they just put, especially when they don't put any punctuation, that's a lot harder. Um, but mm -hmm. if there's a script and they'll write, say, sadly, or sigh, angrily, or pretty much anything like that, I find it a little bit easier to do than if I'm just given a script with no direction and they tell me, give it all you got, share your emotion. And I have absolutely no idea where to start. But if I'm given some kind of direction, and I feel it's a lot easier. But talking about like, if I would have to determine, make that determination on my own. Yeah, I would say that's a lot more difficult. But um, I just keep practicing. Um, I, I watch a lot of movies and I try to imitate the characters. Um, I, I look at a lot of animated movies, um, a lot of dramas, a lot of plays. And I feel like that's really helped me expand my horizons when it comes to being expressive in my voice acting. Very good. Um, that was a really good question. That was really helpful. <laughs> yes, I believe it was also. Thank you for your question. I appreciate it. You're quite welcome. All right. So I'm, still I'm just here. checking out. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. Um, I'm just checking the text chat to see if anyone else wanted to leave anything in the questions here. I've got another question. Have you ever turned down a voice acting role? Ooh, okay, yeah. Um, to answer your question, yes. I have turned down quite a few voice acting roles that are against my priorities, against what I stand for, against my motives, which a lot of times someone has asked me to do a voice for a character that cusses a lot, does something inappropriate, not age appropriate, not PG rated. Um, I always turn down voice acting roles that are like that because I don't feel comfortable doing them. Um, I know some people might be okay with doing PG-13 or R-rated stuff. Um, sometimes I do PG-13 rated voice acting, but because I like to stay family friendly, I will turn down a voice acting role if I feel it makes me uncomfortable or it might make other people uncomfortable that I'm voicing for because my audience oftentimes contains uh, children or um, adolescents, and I want to be a good example as a teenager myself. Um, so, so yeah, if, if it's a voice acting role that I feel is inappropriate, rude, um, or if, if the topic is inappropriate, like, I just, no, I, I won't do it. I'm sorry. But um, there's a lot of voice acting roles that I that I do like. And like I said, those are usually family friendly roles. But yes, to answer your question, unfortunately, I do have to turn down a lot of voice acting roles that have adult themes or adult language. Um, and I think even when I do get older, I still might continue to stay family friendly because that's my priority and that's what I find important. And like it, like I said, Tails, Sonic, Amy, they're all family friendly characters. And if someone asks me to do a comic where they're being not in character and being rude, I I'm not going to use my Tails voice or my Amy voice or my Cream voice for something like that. So yeah, to answer your question, um, I have turned down voice acting roles. And there's a lot that I haven't and may turn down in the future. But for now, I'm just, I keep on voice acting, keep putting myself out there, seeing what kind of request I get. Um, it's exciting whenever I get a new request. Honestly, I, I love getting new requests and I love being able to share my voice with people, make them happy, um, uh, sharing my voice throughout different social media platforms, not just staying in, in one area. I like to put myself out there, especially on Casting Call Club or 
here in Sonic Revolution. It's lots of fun being able to participate in panels and and being able to do character acting in general. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you for that question. I appreciate it. If anyone has any more questions, looks like we've got about uh, 12 minutes left in the meeting greet. So I've, I've got some time to answer some more questions if anyone's interested. By the way, I'm um, still up here. Oh, um, <laughs> did you have any more questions or? <laughs> um, yes. Um, okay, um, go ahead. All right. So, um, sorry, I'm just looking to see if uh, anyone had their hand raised. Um, when I asked the question earlier about emotion, I felt like you did a good job. Very good job. But the thing I was leaning more towards in that question was the fundamental understanding of emotions themselves. Do you have any insight towards that? Hmm. Um, like, how can one truly understand anger or fear or sadness or joy and know how to implement it into their voice acting? For me, um, personally, uh, I can't fully have a f I don't have a full grasp or understanding of those feelings as they're implemented like in real life but um I mostly will project those feelings like even if it means just being just acting them out as I've seen them on television um I don't really hmm. have a full understanding myself of how it works so I usually use all, all my examples are usually from TV or books. And I usually just act out what I see and what I examine when I watch shows and I'll mimic what I see. Um, or I'll think of a time in my life that I've felt a certain way. and. For example, if I've been really mad at something and I have to like do a part where it says be mad, I'll remember back to that time when I felt a certain way and had a certain feeling and, and incorporate that into the acting, although it's a little mm. bit difficult for me. So I guess I can't fully explain it um, since a lot of times for me, it's mimicking other people's actions and observing other people. Okie dokie. Believe it or not, that's um, actually really helpful. That was a pretty good question. I, I appreciate that. That's, that was a good question to get me thinking. Yeah. Cause like I struggle with that myself and um, I feel like my understanding of emotion as of lately, have had some realizations. I feel like my understanding of emotion has gone to zero. Yeah, I, I can understand that. So it's like I got to relearn how to feel emotion again. Yeah, that, that's hard. I can understand that. Um, I appreciate you being honest and asking that question. Um, it, it was very helpful to get me thinking and um, keep the panel moving. Um, I appreciate all the <laughs> questions you've asked thus far. They've all been really good and insightful and have really helped me um, get some nice content going for, for my uh, meet and greet. <laughs> no problem. I was going to say something I forgot. <laughs> I'm going to check and see if there's any more questions in the chaos stage chat here. Okay. We got another question. How long have you been voice acting in general? Okay. So I would say I started voice acting back in 2018 when I was around 11. And I did acting in middle school. Um, we did a lot of plays. Um, we did like a lot of electives that involved acting and expressing and reading um, fantasy stories, which um, was a lot of fun for me, getting to do different fantasy characters and playing them. So that was my first introduction to acting in general, it was in 2018. 
Um, and then I actually started my Instagram account for voice acting in 2019. Um, and that's when I got more into trying voice impressions, um, trying to be Tails and Amy and Cream and Charmy. And that was just really exciting for me getting to start off my voice impressions and being on YouTube and having people comment like and share what their favorite impression was that I did. And then the next year in 2020 is when I, I made my brand Minty Tales Dubs and Venture Miles VA on YouTube. And um, I changed it from what it was in 2019, which was Foxy Dubs. But now I am Minty Tales Dubs. So um, I know there's a lot of OGs that knew me once as McCloud Dubs, Foxy Dubs. I've been a, a couple different usernames before I was Minty Tales Dubs. But um now I'd say I have a pretty big audience that I act for. Um, starting in 2020 is when I started branching out more and um, getting on TikTok, um, getting on, um, I, I would stream sometimes on Discord. Um, I would do voice acting for plush videos for the first time, like Supersonic Mikey or Supersonic Blake, um, Miles Speeds, um, Kid Awesome Studios. Um, my Tails voice started getting more popular. I would um, make calls into like, um, for example, I made a call in to um, the Benioff Children's Center and I did my Tails voice and they broadcasted it, which was exciting. And then in 2021 is when I met Kate Higgins and Colleen O'Shaughnessy. And I got to talk to them about the fundamentals of voice acting. And they shared what their favorite thing about voice acting was. I shared what my favorite thing about voice acting was. Um, I got to get some insight about what Colleen O'Shaughnessy's favorite role was. About how in Sonic Boom they would improvise. And that's when I got into improv as well, is when Colleen O'Shaughnessy introduced me to improv. And I started doing a lot of improv after that. Um, I also did some acting classes in 20, late 2021 and into 2022, which was when my Instagram account really took flight. It reached its first thousand followers. And I really started getting more noticed. And that takes me to now in 2023, where I am a voice actor for Sonic Revolution. And I've done quite a few different paid roles. I do voice commissions. And it's overall just super exciting for me. And um, I look forward to getting older and growing up and being a real professional voice actor for a real professional studio. Um, that, that would be really fun and exciting. And so, yeah, that was uh, where I started and where I am now when it comes to my voice acting. Very um, cool. Looks like we've got about three to five minutes left. Um, if anyone has any more questions before we start wrapping it up. Um, I'm still up here, by the way. Oh, I sorry, I didn't notice. <laughs> That's all right. Um, was there anything else you wanted to ask before? I got a fun I... question. All right, go ahead. Would you consider pizza with pineapple and anchovies a war crime? Mm, yeah, I would say so. I, I don't. <laughs> I personally don't like it, and I, I'd say that. Um. Probably Tails or any of the Sonic characters wouldn't find that very appealing either. Although, yeah. I wonder if Tails might like mints on his pizza because he likes mint everything. You've got me flowing with ideas for a dessert pizza. Oh, definitely. That, that would be super great. Um, if there's ever another Sonic Revolution meet the kids panel, 
and they have another one of their dessert events, I'll definitely make sure to voice that as the character um, make a dessert pizza. Um, remember the last yeah. time in um, the Sonic Meet the Kids panel, um, Cream the Rabbit made her very special gingerbread cookies for everyone. That was a very fun panel. And I definitely say I cool. look forward to some more panels in the future as the understudy for Tails. Um, I look forward to possibly getting a chance to do some cool new and exciting panels involving either Tails, Movie Tails, Boom Amy, um, Cream. It's just lots of fun being able to do characters. Yeah. I'd say that... Um, this was a pretty good meet and greet. I got to answer quite a few questions. Um, I got to share a couple of my projects, which was nice. Um, it's nice to be here in Sonic Revolution 2023 as my first time being a speaker. And as we're wrapping it up here, it, it's six o'clock, which is about my time to get off stage. Um, uh, I don't know if I can't, I'm not really sure if I've shared everything yet. Um, I definitely say that I shared quite a bit, which was good. Um, I don't think I've shared my charmy voice yet on this stream. So, I don't believe so either. Um, uh, if, if anyone, <laughs> would you like to hear it? I'm down. All right, then. I was scared because somebody took me, but now I'm free. I'm a free bee, free bee, free bee. Wee! That was actually really good. That's, that, that's one of my favorites as well. I like I like to do charmy. It's really fun. So, um, yeah. It, remi this it reminded me of the part in Sonic Heroes when he's like, see, 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 see. <laughs> yeah, I love charmy. He's a fun character. Yeah. All right. Um, so that, I guess we're wrapping up now. Um, thank right. you, everyone who decided to come in. Oops. Have we got another question here? Um, no, it looks okay. Um, all right, then. So if we have no more questions and we're all good, um, thank you, everyone, for coming who did come. I appreciate all the questions. Um, I, I enjoyed being able to share everything about myself and my voice acting journey, um, my favorite characters, the voice, my projects. And um, yeah, thank you for having me in Sonic Revolution 2023. Um, oh, and I, I leave the stage. Question. Oh, OK. Um, what, what was What that? is your username? Um, my username? Yeah, I'm visually impaired, so I can't really read it. Oh, it's um my Discord username is inventormiles.va and my uh display name is Minty Tails Dubs Inventor Miles VA. But yeah, my my username is inventormiles.va all lowercase. Alrighty. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. It's been awesome. All right. Um so to um End this panel. I just want to say, catch you on the flip flop. See you later. Bye.